Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have a, a helmet I've referenced in a lot of videos, and I've actually recently just pulled those videos. Uh, you would have seen this uh, referenced in my Mark 7 video and my Mark 6A video. I pulled both of those because I'll redo them now that I have the item I'm referencing in those both of those videos here to show you as well. Uh, this is the original Mark 6 helmet, and... Um, I've been looking for one of these in good condition for a long time. Now this one isn't quite uh, the condition I would like uh, it to be. I try to have all my helmets be uh, as close to new as possible. And uh, this one has a really, is just in really, really good condition. But it is used, as you could tell, by, by the shell and stuff like that. Um, if one of you guys lives in England um, and can get your hands on a size medium one of these uh, in pretty much brand new condition preferably one of the smooth ones one of the like really really early smooth textured ones um i'd be willing to pay you guys for it I, i'd send you a paypal transfer request N no problem at all if you can get me one that's new uh like that uh, in size medium uh, if that's something you might be able to do leave leave that in the comments and i will i will have no problem paying you whatever shipping you need to get it over here and everything like that i'd 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 even give you a absolute shout out and praise and everything right on the channel i i would thank you so much if you could possibly do that because these are actually super hard to find here in america in good condition uh so i was really glad i could find my mark sit uh my mark 7 and my mark 6a in brand new condition but i had the hardest time finding a mark 6 in new condition and this is as close as i could get um so this uh, is a, a relatively early Mark VI. Uh, they came out in 1985. This helmet came out in 1985 to replace. I'll get that up on screen here, uh, what it replaced. Uh, this is the uh, Mark III uh, turtle helmet with the Mark IV lining. Um, so this is uh, the British helmet that came out in 1943. This also has its own video if you want to learn anything, but we'll cover a general overview on it. It came out in 1943 to replace the uh, kind of World War I era um, Brody shells. Um, and these were used up until uh, 1985 by the uh, British military. Um, there, is a, there is a gap between, uh, these are called the Mark III's, uh, with the Mark IV uh, liner, uh, and the reason the uh, ballistic nylon Mark VI wasn't called the Mark V uh, was because the Mark V is actually a different helmet from this. It's pretty much the same shell, but it was designed to be made in the uh, um, colonies. It was a little bit simpler to manufacture. You see a lot of them made in India, and it's pretty much the same exact shell, but it doesn't have a rim, and it's in a lot lighter green. Um, but this is the liner of it. It's kind of a sock-type liner. Uh, so this is a very, very comfortable helmet and they use this, uh, the British used this up until, uh, 1985. Um, so we'll get that out of the way now and put the Mark VI back up here. So this replaced that steel helmet in 1985 and, uh, these were made, uh, by, uh, NP Aerospace of England and they're not Kevlar. A lot of times, a lot of people who don't know a lot about helmets and stuff like that mistake these for Kevlar, but they're not. Uh, they're ballistic nylon. Uh, ballistic nylon uh, is statistically uh, not as good as Kevlar, but there is some distinct benefits to ballistic nylon. Uh, ballistic nylon doesn't break down over time like Kevlar does. Kevlar you have to replace every uh, certain number of years because it gets um, uh, it gets less and less effective uh, with time. Uh, it starts to break down, whereas ballistic nylon has an... Um, Quoting NP Aerospace here, the Mark VI has an almost unlimited service life because of what it's made out of. Uh, so, which is probably why the British kept uh, using these from the 80s, uh, kept using helmets made out of this material from the 80s up until today. Uh, but now they're starting to get replaced uh, by a uh, polyethylene helmet, uh, the P2 helmet. So, um, but this helmet uh, was really one of the first composite helmets in the world and I'm surprised it didn't influence more more designs uh, because this is actually probably one of my favorite early composite de composite helmet designs the uh, other ones the the two other big ones from around this era would be the Pazgat and uh, the Orlite those are really and this are really the three first uh, ballistic composite helmets out there um, I don't know why this one didn't influence more people uh, more countries or anything like that, but because I really like this is probably my 
first pick out of all three of those uh, just because I really like the liner and everything in it. Um, but this is a uh, this is kind of a, a later one. It's textured. This is dated 1988, um, and this helmet came out uh, in 1985, uh, and it was the first British helmet designed to accommodate uh, respirators, uh, communications, and uh, tons of other stuff like that without having to take your helmet off. So um, that was a big uh, advantage on the battlefield. Um, there was a couple problems with these helmets, though, that were remedied later uh, in in other uh, generations of this helmet. Um, this helmet served uh, pretty much unchanged uh, from 1985 to 2005. So that's that's about 30 years. So, wait, yeah, 85, 95, 2000, so 20 years. Sorry, my bad. My shitty math there. Uh, before it was uh, replaced, and it was replaced by something uh, called the Mark 6A, which was pretty much this exact helmet, uh, just a little bit thicker shell, um, and a uh, different crown uh, pad here. Whereas you can see this crown pad is four uh, little nylon straps. I'll zoom in here for you. You can see it's four little herringbone nylon straps tied in place with a ring, and it has the same problem as the Pazgat, where this ring tends to cut into your head and uh, makes it very, very uncomfortable, especially if you don't have hair. But if you've ever been in the military, you really don't have hair. Um, but other than that, this is a very, very comfortable, very, very effective helmet. It's adjustable um, as far as circumference goes to be this little buckle which pulls this whole uh, styrofoam assembly here uh, forward. Um, it has a soft leather covered uh, brow pad and a soft leather covered nape pad. It has a three point chin strap made out of cotton adjustable with slider buckles and little elastic keepers. Uh, the chin cup is a leather uh, covered, it's like a suede covered two nylon straps. It's a pretty stretchy leather uh, actually. This is a lot narrower than the Mark 6A and the Mark uh, 7 helmets. Uh, it's held in place with one snap. Uh, there is a little bit of corrosion on the uh, the ring here, but that's uh, pretty acceptable for a helmet that's as old as this one is. Now, I would show you the tag, but the tag is actually under there in a very, very inconvenient spot. Um, but this is a used helmet, so it has the guy's name on it, and I don't want to show his name or anything like that. So we'll just say the year, uh, the year it was made, which is 1988. Um, this helmet uh, has a... <clears throat> Excuse me. A um uh fuck five point liner, I think it is, right? Three point liner. No, it's five point. So it's hooked in the back, um, in the front, and uh these two uh you can see them here in this one, uh these two rubber plugs right there that stick through the shell uh to hold it in. Uh, which was really one of the major flaws of this helmet as far as protection goes uh, because these uh, rubber plugs created weak spots in the shell. Um, so if so even though how statistically small uh, the chances are, if a bullet was to hit right next to this plug or right on the plug, it can go through the shell because the plugs are made out of a lot uh, in more inferior material than the surrounding shell parts. So it detects, it's technically a weakness in the shell that would allow the... Uh, uh, bullet or piece of shrapnel to go through with uh, relative ease even though that's the chances of that happening are very unlikely it's still more likely than having a seamless shell and uh, you can see the other points where uh, everything is mounted here uh, all around so uh, but uh, this helmet is actually a, a very very comfortable helmet I like it uh, it's very very lightweight uh, compared to a lot of other ballistic helmets of this time, like the Pazgat, which weighs like twice as much as this. Um, I know you guys have wanted to see an original Mark VI helmet video for a long time. I'm really glad I could get one that's in this nice a condition. Uh, but like I said, I'm still looking for one that's brand new. And if you could uh, possibly help me out with that, um, I'd be forever in your debt, you guys. Um, just because they're so hard to find where I am. Uh, for a reasonable price, that is. But uh, if, so, if you live over in England, again, uh, let me know. And I will, uh, I'll, uh, I'm sure we could work something out here as far as getting a brand new Mark VI to me. Uh, if that's something you could find over there. I don't know how common brand new Mark VI's are over in England, uh, still. Uh, but if you can, uh, possibly find one of those for me, uh, I'd be, uh, 
greatly, greatly uh, appreciative of that. So, um, again, this has been the Mark VI helmet. Uh, I really, really like this helmet. This is how it would sit on your head. And uh, I've said it before in some of my uh, British helmet videos. British helmets are ugly as sin. Uh, but they're really, really comfortable. And they're actually really, really effective for what they're made out of. Um, so, uh, you can find these usually pretty beat up. Uh, they are around. They're a lot more common in Europe than they are here in America. But if you do manage to get your hands on one, uh, I highly recommend it because like I said, it's one of the helmets that's going to last forever. Um, so thank you so much for watching this, you guys. And like I said, I'll have to remake my Mark seven and my Mark six, a helmet, uh, videos now to, uh, reference this correctly in those. So look forward to those. Hopefully as, uh, as many people watch them, uh, the remakes as, uh, the original one. Um, so once again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, leave those in the comments. Uh, if you're one of the people that can possibly help me out with my search for a brand new one of these, hopefully one of the really early ones, if that's possible, but I'll take one of the later ones as well. Um, in new condition, uh, if you're one of the people that can help me out. Also leave me a comment. I'd very much appreciate that. If, uh, one of you guys could help me out with that, or if you have one that you're looking to get rid of. Um, I'd be willing to pay for that. Um, so as always, thank you so much for watching and hopefully this video is a, a good change of pace from yesterday's video, which was pretty depressing and a look into my childhood. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for the support on that video as well. Uh, I really debated on doing that one, uh, but, uh, I'll leave you guys to it now and I'll, I'll end this video here and, uh, I look forward to seeing all of you guys in the next video. Bye.